January 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Matthew chapter 18 from the New Testament. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, had him stand among them, and said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn around and become like little children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever then humbles himself like this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, and whoever welcomes a child like this in my name welcomes me. But if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a huge millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the open sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. It is necessary that stumbling blocks come, but woe to the person through whom they come. If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into internal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter into life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into fiery hell. See that you do not disdain one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think if someone owns a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray? Will he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go look for that one that went astray? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he will rejoice more over it than the other ninety-nine that did not go astray. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that one of these little ones be lost. If your brother sins, go and show him his fault when the two of you are alone. If he listens to you, you have regained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others with you, so that at the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter may be established. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If he refuses to listen to the church, treat him like a Gentile or a tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven, and whatever you release on earth will have been released in heaven. Again, I tell you the truth, if two of you on earth agree about whatever you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three are assembled in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother who sins against me? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, I tell you, but seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his slaves. As he began settling his accounts, a man who owed ten thousand talents was brought to him. Because he was not able to repay it, the Lord ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, children, and whatever he possessed, and repayment to be made. Then the slave threw himself to the ground before him, saying, Be patient with me, and I will repay you everything. The Lord had compassion on that slave, and released him, and forgave him the debt. After he went out, that same slave found one of his fellow slaves who owed him one hundred silver coins. So he grabbed him by the throat and started to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe me. Then his fellow slave threw himself down and begged him, Be patient with me and I will repay you. But he refused. Instead, he went out and threw him in prison until he repaid the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were very upset and went and told their Lord everything that had taken place. Then his Lord called the first slave and said to him, Evil slave, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not have shown mercy to your fellow slave, just as I showed it to you? And in anger his Lord turned him over to the prison guards to torture him until he repaid all he owed. So also my heavenly Father will do to you, if each of you does not forgive your brother, from your heart. God, today I pray for compassion. 
that compassion will come into my heart in all situations, not just the ones I pick and choose, not just for the people who are easy to love or compassion for the people who are like me, but that I will have compassion and grace and forgiveness towards everyone. God asks for patience within that compassion that I do not understand what that person has been through that caused them to make the choice that is now making me angry or frustrated or hurt. That everything in their life that led up to that point, that choice that they made, wasn't my life. And I wasn't there to make those decisions or those choices. And I do not get to stand in condemnation of whatever choice that they are making. I do ask for compassion that I can show them in those situations. Forgiveness, God, isn't, isn't as simple, I think, as we try and make it here on earth. We hold grudges. We hold on to pain. We hold on to drama for all sorts of reasons. Fear. Lack of faith in you and, and what you can do in the healing of those relationships. But today I just ask for compassion. Not just that I am able to forgive in these situations or that people are able to forgive me, but that there's compassion and kindness in those situations. You know, that first slave that you talk about, it wasn't just a debt that he had. That if we equal it out to today's terms, we're talking an amount that he owed his master close to $6 billion in, in our money today. $6 billion. I can't even imagine owing that much money. And then he turns around and tries to collect from somebody who owes him about $12,000, which is still a lot of money, but to compare the two, there's really no comparison. So that if you can forgive us something unimaginable, unimaginable like $6 billion in debt, our sins, our sins of theft and, and adultery and intentionally hurting other people, gossip, lies, murder. If you, my God, can forgive the unimaginable, all the unimaginable things I do and sin against you, then surely I can have compassion to the other person here on earth. Today, I, I ask you for compassion. Teach me what that looks like. Show me what that looks like. Allow me to be humble in those situations where I truly don't understand or know or appreciate what the other person has gone through to make those choices. Help me to not take it personal, but instead to love them like you have loved us. In your son's name we pray. Amen.